Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the lesson. And the first thing is the term plane mirror. When you hear the term plane mirror, it just has to do with the flat mirror. So um, uh, when you're looking at the mirror in, in a, like here I just was holding up a crayon in front of a mirror, I can see a reflection. And the reason why you can see a reflection is because it's not diffuse. If you look around the room, you can, if you look at a wall, not at a mirror or, or any sort of plain mirror, like just look at the, the, the bricks if you're in this classroom or look at your wall if you're at home and you're going to see light reflecting off of that, that object because you can actually see it. If you couldn't see light reflecting off the object, um, then you wouldn't be able to see the object at all. So when you're looking at the wall, and so this would be the wall and not the actual, um, well, this would be um, the the crayon's reflection off the wall, you really don't see it. And it's because it's this, it, the rays are diffuse. So we call it the term, the term is diffuse. And these are the kind of things that you're gonna see on the quiz in, in a few minutes when we're done with the lesson. Um, the rays bounce off from the light, whatever light source, source there is, they bounce off the wall. And when they bounce off the wall, they, they get reflected in all different directions. And because they get reflected in all different directions, you can't actually make out the, the image of whatever, you know, what maybe if the if light was reflecting off this crayon and reflecting off the wall and coming back, you're not gonna see the crayon's image on the wall. That's to do with having a rough surface. And now here, take a look at the difference. I go ahead and take that same crayon and I go ahead and throw it in front of a, uh, uh, um, a plane mirror, just like you'd see in a bathroom. And in this case, light's reflecting off of this crayon the object and it's reflecting off of the mirror and it's coming to your eyes and it's coming to your eyes in a way that's organized. Since uh, the plain mirror is flat and smooth, all the rays are coming at you in the same, in this kind of the same, same way that they were reflected. And therefore you're making and you're seeing the image. And so that's the difference with the plain mirror. The reflection, um, it's, it's off of, a, if it's an orderly reflection that it creates that, that image you see. There's three mirrors, mirror types. And so you have your plain mirror. Um, you may or may not recognize, I know when I do a little construction and things like that, when I hear with a, a planer, I'm flattening something out. So that makes more sense to me. But if you think of a plane, a flat surface, the planes, flat surface, that might help you out with the term plane mirror. Concave mirror, the way I like to think of concave. And so if I have an image, so what I have right here, so just so you understand my diagrams, I have a candle and I have a flat surface that's reflective and the candle's on the left, left side of it. Oh, yeah, I, let me get the notes just so I don't brush past what you're taking a few notes on. Did you have enough time for, did I give you enough time for diffuse and planar reflection? Diffuse reflections, main thing is that they're, they're, they're random, random reflections, you can't make out an object, planar reflections, it's orderly reflection off a of flat, smooth surface, and the, the rays are reflected the same way, and therefore you can make out, make out the, the image. So that would be the, the main with the first two. And then describe the difference between three types of mirrors, plain mirrors are flat, concave mirrors, they have a bend. And so I was trying to look at my wording, trying to make it as, as, as easy as possible. But um, think of a cave. If you have a cave, so instead of putting a candle, of course, I put a caveman there. But I could have put a candle right here. Um, the cave around that, that object. And then convex, really the way I think of it is it's not concave and it's not planar, it's the other one. But whatever helps you think of it, convex, you're going to have the, the, the outside of the mirror is going to be bending away. And based on the type of mirror you have, you're going to have an image forming, a different image forming different types of image forming. And then tomorrow we're gonna to look at lenses and we're gonna look a little bit more about how these images form. So here's your questions. What type of mirror is a regular one that you look at in the bathroom? That's gonna be a plain mirror. What type of mirror would, if you have a spoon and you're looking at it like you're about to eat some cereal, that curving around towards you, which type of kind of mirror is that gonna be? And that would be a concave. So it'd be concaving around. If you had a really huge spoon, you could sit in it. It could curve around you. So it's going to be a concave mirror. And 
And then just talking about this reflection, because I need to, I need you to understand what I'm, uh, what why this is called. When I'm looking at a regular mirror, a flat mirror, why is it called a virtual upright non magnified and flipped horizontal mirror? So, first of all, when it comes down to mirrors, if you shine a light on a mirror, the light comes back at you. The way that the light is supposed to where it's supposed to go is the real side. And since it comes back on you, if I'm right here holding this uh, box of toothpicks up in front of a, a mirror, well, I'm on the virtual, I'm on, sorry, I'm on the real side. I'm on the side that light would really reflect to. If I looked in the mirror, it would look like it's reflecting through. But with a mirror, just think of the way, the place that light's supposed to go, because it's going to change when we have lenses. The lenses, light's supposed to go through a lens. But light is supposed to stay on your side. And so for, for mirrors, um, when you're looking at the mirror, it looks like the thing. So there's a picture of me with my beard last year. Um, the looks like I, I'm on the virtual side. It looks like I'm there virtually. And so that's why it's called virtual because it looks like it's behind the mirror. Um, it's upright because I'm standing up and right there, there's a picture of me you know, when I look at the image. So what I'm seeing here, you don't, you see my hand, which is the object, which is the object right here. You see the image of my hand over here because this is the reflection. So objects where it's starting, the image is what you see. And I'm upright. And if you take a look, the image is upright because it's facing the same way. I'm holding my hand just like this, upright. And you see my hand upright as well. You don't always see that in mirrors. Um, if you have a curved mirror, you might see yourself upside down when you look at that mirror. Yeah, this is the one that you have to really understand, non-magnified. Non-magnified, if you look at the picture, it looks like my hand is smaller, right? If you take a look at the image, it looks like my hand smaller, everybody see that? But it's considered non-magnified because it's not warped. It looks like my hand is the same size as it would have been if it was that far away. So like you guys all look smaller now to me than if you were standing right in front of my face. It's kind of the same thing. If it's the way it should be when it's that distance, it's considered non-magnified. Everybody with me? So just make sure non-magnified doesn't mean that it doesn't look smaller. It just looks the same size as it should be. Like if I was like a little tiny little you know, midget person over here behind the mirror, way smaller than I should look, then that would have been like reduced. We'll talk about reduced. And if I looked a lot bigger, if my hand in this mirror was like huge, that would be considered magnified. But it looks the way it should look. It looks the way it should look when it's that distance away. And so that is where non-magnified comes to be. So just, just remember, it's, it appears the way it should be. It doesn't mean that it's bigger or smaller. For, it just appears the way it should be. And then flipped horizontally, if you look at the image, you see the, um, the, the way that the words are written. That's part of the reason why I had this toothpick pick box to that words on it. You can see it's just flipped the other way, flipped horizontally. So those are the reflections off plane mirrors. Also, let's go ahead and write this down now. All virtual images are upright. Just write that down somewhere on your paper because that's gonna save you when it comes to lenses too. If it's upright, it's virtual. So any question where it's multiple choice and you see virtual and, and, and inverted, or you see something other than those two words, if I have virtual in a sentence, I should have upright in a sentence or it's wrong. If I have, you know, if I have, and you'll see tomorrow, if I have real, it's gonna be, inverted or upside down or it's wrong those those words always come hand in hand virtual will, virtual images will always always be upright and a lot, a lot of you have heard about your lenses we'll talk about more about lenses tomorrow but your eyes when you look through the lens in your eye when i'm looking at you guys in reality my my brain is getting my well first of all my my retina is getting a picture of you upside down and my brain's flipping it back up and that's because when we get to, when we look at lenses tomorrow, the kind of lens that we have in our eye, um, you know, the, it's going to actually produce in your. If it was if it was that same lens reflected on a screen, when you're looking at it, you would see it upside down. But it's uh, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Okay, so here's some ray diagram variables. Uh, really, I'm kind of painting the picture more for tomorrow, where we have to do a little bit more with it. But we have an object, and usually I'll draw the object on the left side. Um, it doesn't really have to be on the left side, but we have an object. We have the height of the object. If I took a, a, a ruler and measured it, that's gonna be height of the object. And then we're gonna have, we're gonna see how to do ray diagrams today really quickly on flat mirrors, pretty, pretty basic. Well, the result of this ray diagram that we're gonna draw, it's gonna end off on another um, 
arrow. And if you take a look, an arrow is a good way to represent any sort of object because an arrow, you can clearly see the top and you can clearly see the back of it because an arrow has an arrow tip. So if I'm projecting an object and I'm looking at, and, and I'm going to draw this gray diagram, you'll see more of what this means later on. But, and I, and I end up drawing this image. Well, I can see where the arrow tip is. And if the arrow tip's facing up as well, then it's upright. And so we have the distance of the object, we have the distance of the image, we have the image form, and we have the height of the image. And if I was trying to, de to determine if the image was magnetized, if it was magnetized, uh, magnified, if it was bigger or smaller, um, I would take a look and I would measure it. And if you take a look right here, this object is the same size as the image. So the image, if you're looking in a mirror, you would see the image. And let's say if you were looking at yourself, you would be the object and you would see in the mirror, you, you'd see your image. And if uh, when we do these ray diagrams, if this is the same size, then it is, then it is non-magnified. If it's facing upwards too, then it's upright. These are kind of little things that you're gonna have to know for your, for your quiz in a few minutes when you're done with that. And then the principal line, see this principal line right here? If you're standing on the floor, the floor is your principal line. And if you're looking at the image, you'd also see the floor. And if you were standing on the floor facing upwards, then you're upright. And if you saw the floor, but then you saw yourself upside down, facing downwards, you'd be inverted. Okay, and then the real versus virtual side. Once again, in a mirror, light's supposed to reflect off of the mirror and come back towards you. So you are the real side. Light really doesn't go behind the mirror, even though it looks like it might. So that's going to be the virtual side. This is going to make a little bit more uh, meaning when we get to math because it's going to it's going to relate to a positive or negative sign we'll, we'll use in the math. Okay, so how do we represent an object, an image, an array diagram? We're pretty much done with the lesson. Now I'm going to ask you a few questions here, and then you're going to do your E-class quiz, which is 10 questions, and you'll be done early today. So what do we do use to represent a, an object and image? What's that going to be? Um, what are you use? Come on. Somebody. What was that picture of? What did we use? What did we use over here? We used a, I can hear it, almost hear it. We used an arrow because arrows are good because we have tops and bottoms. We can see. So like if I was, the real image was me, I can tell the top of, top of me would be that it would be represented by the arrow tip or that the, the, the yeah, the arrow tip. So we'll have any image, anything. You can grab a box or whatever, box of candy, and look at it in the mirror. You can see the top of it. You can see the bottom of it. This arrow is going to be used to represent pretty much any object because we don't want to take a ton of time to draw out the object when we're doing these ray diagrams. Okay, finishing off the plane, the 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 plane mirror ray diagram. Go ahead and get that flat edge. You can use your phone. You can use a mirror or uh, uh, any sort of flat edge. Use your phone. Use a piece, another piece of paper. Use a ruler if you have it. The first ray that we would draw on the ray diagram would go directly from the tip of the arrow, from the object, to the mirror. And this line right here represents the mirror. This is our object. So this is going to be, once again, kind of questions I'll ask you in a few minutes on the quiz. The object is the first arrow we start with. We go ahead and we hit that mirror straight on. Which way would that ray reflect? If it hit the mirror straight on, it would go which way? It would go directly back. So go ahead and, so you took your pencil. Let me go ahead and just try and draw this out. So you can see what I'm talking about a little bit more. The ray is coming in and really you don't have to leave the page. Once it hits that mirror, it's gonna come straight back and go right back like that. And if you don't, if you're not using a straight edge, just try to be as neat as possible. Like I tried to be, I wasn't perfect. You can tell because it shouldn't have a little gap right here. It should have went straight back on itself. Okay, the next ray, and so I'll give you a second. The next ray we're gonna draw would go, let's go ahead and try to hit this spot. So we go ahead and draw it in, draw it in, draw it in, draw it in, draw it in. hit that spot right there. And then it's reflection. Remember the, the law of reflections? is going to be like that. This angle and this angle should be equal. So I didn't do a perfect job. Of course, I didn't even, even hit that center area of the, but you know, I tried to hit, I tried to go straight at that principal line, hit the principal line, and then just easier for you to see the results right here. And then we stuck to the real side. Remember the real sides over here. And for the math, 
real is going to be a positive. So I'll try to get you to start thinking about positives and negatives. And we start to the real side and take a look. See these arrow tips? We're only going to draw arrow tips on the reflections. See the arrow tips? Are those ever going to come together if they just kept on going out on the real side? Now they're just going further and further apart. So when this happens, what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and you're going to line it up with this and just draw a dotted line. Just draw a dotted line into, we're going to go into the virtual side. So your brain would never make out this image the way it's set up right here. So your brain has to go ahead and it has to take itself because your brain can do crazy things. It can take itself to the virtual side and see what's really happening. And go ahead and take this arrow tips. The arrow tips are important because you're going to take both these arrow tips and you're going to do a flat line. Get Go ahead and get, uh, and I'm going to draw this wrong. So I'm going to go back to my, without a ruler, it's really hard to draw this accurate and I want you to see it accurate. So straight in, back out to the principal line through and then take both of these lines, flat edge, following these arrow tips to the virtual side. And this point right here where the, where the rays intersect that is, they started from the arrow tip. That's where the arrow is going to be drawn. Always going to be the arrow tip. If the arrow, for some reason, which it won't in these kind of mirrors, because they only form one kind of mirror. If the arrow, if the lines intersected below the principal line, it would be upside down. Anytime you have anything up to upright above the principal line, the arrow tip should be drawn straight up. And that's what I do here. And so now we have the image. Now we have our object, which we always had, and we can analyze the result of it. And what we see is that the object and the image are the same size. We call it non-magnified. So that's where the non-magnified. We also see the arrow tip was facing up. And since we, bought, we ended above the principal line, the arrow tip is gonna be facing up. So we're gonna call it upright. And then lastly, oh, just it's on the virtual side, so virtual. But once again, like I said before, if it's upright, it's always going to be virtual. So it's it's just kind of it happens to be on the virtual side, but it goes with it. It's it's virtual, and we can't see the whole uh, horizontally inverted kind of thing. But from the ray diagrams, you're going to draw ray diagrams to tomorrow more than today. We're pretty much done today. When we draw those ray diagrams, you're gonna analyze it and you're gonna get this information and you're gonna have to answer questions on how did the image form? So you have to understand what you're looking at. The image is this arrow, the object was the original arrow. And then from there you can come up and you can see everything that we saw here. Same size, which meant non-magnified upright because the arrow of the image, once again, where we ended off was where the image ended off was also upright and virtual because it was on the virtual side. Okay, and so what is the object you see in a mirror, real or virtual? And so it's virtual, upright, non-magnified, just like I said, so it's gonna be virtual. Describe the image produced by the flat plane mirror. It's gonna be virtual, upright, non-magnified. And this is just the stuff I've been telling you from before. All virtual images will always be upright. And then lastly, finish off with this right here. Go ahead and what does HI represent? Once again, the I represents image, the H represents height. So subscript I represents the, the images, height, objects, height, the distance to the image, that would be right here. Distance to the objects, that would be right there. And then we have, lastly, this line down the middle is a principal line. So 